calls to the suspects in a suspicious circumstance call. How do you look for three suspects? How do you look how do you look for three suspects with such a scant description? Again, we're going to rely on uh, information and there's processes involved in the initial investigation, canvassing, talking to people in the area, reviewing those videos that somebody had asked the question about. Joe could ask the question, why do they think cordoning the area is going to stop them? How do they know they didn't get out of the area? That's right. That's what caught their marathon bombing. Patsy was a citizen, not the martial law. Found or will there? We're in preliminary discussion with some of our federal partners related. I haven't talked to Joe yet. I don't even know if he got a question. And this started about 20 minutes ago. We send our reporters to most big events now. The gun was out of the holster and was found at the scene or nearby. Again, I'm not going to confirm any of that information because it is relevant to the course of this investigation. And that's key information that's going to help us along the way. We're going to go to break, but Joe, I know you can hear me. We come back in a minute or so. Try to ask the question, do we think this is connected to the call to kill police by Black Lives Matter? Totalitarianism comes in many different flavors throughout history. It can come from the right wing, the left wing. It can come from religious cults. It can come from a foreign invading army. And in the modern 21st century, it's basically coming from political correctness, masquerading as the Renaissance, masquerading as liberalism. It seeks to shut down free speech. And the controlled globalist left has willing accomplices in the Republican Party and other conservative and libertarian organizations and groups throughout the world. The robber barons that control this planet are not free market. They are monopoly men who seek to have systems free of competition controlled by offshore combines above the law. The main mission of Infowars.com and my 20 years on air is to shatter the left-right paradigm and to get the public to become aware of what's really governing and controlling society on a mass scale. Bottom line, we have reached that legendary, colossal moment in history where the next thousand years of human development, our very destiny is being decided. That's why we're launching Operation Money Bomb 2015. The first money bomb I've done in three years, because we only do these if they're critical to be able to build up our infrastructure. And with the money we raise from this, we will be able to stay on the satellites and get on UHF, VHF, and cable stations across North America, reaching tens of millions of more people right at the time they're receptive and looking for answers. Starting September 16th, through the 17th, we're going to broadcast live from 11 a.m. on the 16th through 2 p.m. on the 17th for 27 hours with an amazing lineup of guests, investigative journalists, documentary films, and more. We are seeking to raise a million dollars so that we can reach 400 million extra people potentially in the next year. Because if you do the math, and if you look at the numbers that we're already getting from affiliates and from the internet and from YouTube and from Facebook and all the platforms, we are reaching 20 million people a week. If you put all that together over a year, that's upwards of 200 million different individuals around the world is how the algorithm metrics come out. So I simply want to double that in the next 12 months after launching this money bomb. Just the satellites, the closed captioning under federal law and other regulations will cost us right at $39,000 a month, which if you add it together is over $400,000 a year alone. When you talk about cameras, crew, studio, 
million dollars is only a portion of what we need to do this. But it's an important part to ensure with the collapsing economy and the hard times we're going into that we have the funds it takes to keep this beacon of truth exposing globalism and dehumanization operating. So join us this September 16th and 17th for what I believe will be the final money bomb that InfoWars ever runs as we prepare to launch to the next and final level of global awakening. Because as Mahatma Gandhi famously said, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they attack you, then you win. We are in that process of being massively attacked and in the face we're charging up, getting ready, and going in. Go to infowars.com forward slash money bomb for all the information. And in closing, I want to say this to all of you patriots out there across the globe that have spread the word about our operation and that have supported us. History is happening right now. The destiny of humanity is being decided right now. And Infowars, which you, the viewers and listeners and activists, stand at the heart of, is the engine that has made all this possible. You're not standing behind the info war. You are standing at the center of it. You are right beside us in this fight. And I guarantee you, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Sam Adams would be incredibly proud of what you've done in defense of human freedom, in defense of true liberty. So from myself, Alex Jones, and the entire InfoWars crew, we salute you. Join us this September 16th and 17th for the 27-hour Money Bomb in defense of human liberty. We are covering the Fox Lake police officer's death press conference. They had a huge manhunt in and around the town, searching hundreds and hundreds of homes with no uh, leads so far, no luck. Joe Biggs is trying to get questions in right now. Let's go back to that live feed. However, we are not just about anything. We're looking at every aspect of the who've been experienced, and I'm sure you've been to a number of these press conferences, know that these types of investigations have made twists and turns that could happen within a couple of minutes. What type is of there research, any going, on research right now? going on right now? We have investigators out in Kansas again, following up on leads, uh, knocking on doors that we didn't get to yesterday evening uh, near that perimeter area. He says there were FBI uh, knifers, which are, are equivalent of our SWAT team, the sheriff's office, so, if you want to call that uh, a search, refer to it, I'm going to go to it. Is it kind of frustrating that after all the resources yesterday, is there a bolo out? Is it a national body that you see fall uh, again uh, from various media sources that get the information? Now, it's a little muddy when the uh, chief officer is speaking, but you can hear the questions being asked. Joe Biggs will be able to upload an HD version later. We're going to go to break here in a few minutes, come back with Joe, and get a report from him of what he's witnessed there on the ground. It's always important to have people actually on the ground, focusing in, looking at what's happening. But I want to play a clip. I'm going to play again when we come back from break, and then Louis Farrakhan... One more time, this audio is up on InfoWars.com. Kill Whites and Cops, Black Lives Matter affiliated radio show, calls for race war. Now they've got this retired jail guard coming out saying he's going to hunt down and kill these people that are doing this. I mean, this is already escalating out of control. So right now, let's go to that clip from the... Uh, Black Lives Matter affiliated radio show. King Noble, Black Supremacy. And I want to talk about the shooting of the white deputy sheriff in Houston, Texas. Reminds me of a Bob Marley song, I Shot the Sheriff. To me, what the Houston, Texas brutal execution before the public represents to me, is this open season on killing whites and white police officers and probably killing cops, period. It's open season towards the police department and the police. So now you got some 
black militant or some angry black man walks up and executes a cracker cop in broad daylight. This is real. It's open season on killing white people and cops. It's unavoidable, inescapable. It's funny that now we'll move into a time where the predator will become the prey. Yes, oh, yeah. they said there will be a race war and that we cannot win a race war. We can't win. We're outnumbered. They got weapons, they got drones, they got this, they got that. But I remind you of the buffaloes who outnumber the lion. They're bigger than lions and they move in larger herds, but they're picked off by lions one by one by one, picking them off. Today, we live in a time where the white man will be picked off and there's nothing he can do about it. His day is up, his time is up. We will witness more executions and killing of white people and cops than we ever had before. We see with the Houston, Texas shooting, and we see with the news reporting shooting in Virginia. It's about to go down. It's open season on killing white people and crackers. The Black Lives Matter movement wasn't enough. We tried to appeal to them to let them know that Stay this thing would come. It would happen. They thought they were indestructible and defensible. Oh, my goodness. Let's, let's back this up. We're going to come back and play the whole thing I edited. I'm going to play Louis Farrakhan. But, but this is just yesterday. This is the response to the dead, dead sheriff's deputy. I, I mean, this is so crazy, folks, to know the White House and George Soros are running this. It's, it's just amazing. Joe Biggs, always the hard charger, said yesterday, I want to get on a plane, go to Chicago, get up there to Fox Lake and cover this manhunt with the three men reportedly that gunned down a veteran police officer and Army veteran. One black, two white. It, was it a robbery? Was it a criminal operation? Or was it another group wanting to execute police? And we have this new article up at Infowars.com. Fast food worker refuses to serve cop. Example of growing animosity towards law enforcement. Saw another story a few days ago about Chuck E. Cheese. On-duty cop comes in. They say you can't be in here with a gun on your side. That shows the anti-police, anti-gun culture, which again is George Soros' White House run. First, they train the cops to act like thugs, cause a lot of problems, and set them up for a fall. And I was playing the chilling clip earlier that I'm going to play again in a moment because I didn't play all of it, of a Black Lives Matter affiliated group. And it's every major Black Lives Matter march I've seen is put wings on pigs, put them in blankets, fry them like bacon. You've heard the clips. New clips in Minnesota, new clips in Dallas over the weekend. People saying, yeah, you better watch out, deputies. That's what you get when you kill innocent black people. But the point is, that's isolated in some departments. And most of the cops that do it who are in the wrong are getting indicted and going to prison. You don't know some random deputy like, pumping gas did jack squat to you. But it shows how racial it is. Well, they're white, just like this white drug head that went and shot the nine black people. Now all these white groups are calling for killing black people. That is so stupid. The race war, I will officially say, has begun. Now, we'll see how serious it gets, but it's being driven by MTV. I mean, they are up in the rhetoric, in the movies, in the culture. Whether the stories are true or exaggerated from NWA, it's totally anti-cop and glorifies it. Uh, you've got MTV coming out with all this stuff. Uh, you've got, you know, slap a heterosexual white man at Berkeley. It's just a full-on leftist orgy, and they want to start a nationwide crisis to be able to bring in martial law, and they're seriously looking at doing it. It is incredible. It is just amazing. And then meanwhile, any real reform of police departments won't happen. They're just going to get globalized and federalized under all this. It, 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 it's a leftist takeover. Let's go to Joe Biggs, who was just inside the press conference covering things. We were getting a lot of mindless questions from the press that we were hearing. Joe, you've been on the ground a few hours. What have you seen? What's happening? Well, so far, Alex, I'm standing in front of the Fox Lake Police Department here in Illinois. Now, myself and a whole lot of journalists are out here right now. It's essentially a media circus, followed by a lot of people in the neighborhood, in the town, that are coming to add stuff to the memorial that they've set up out front. Um, what we know so far is there are some conflicting reports with whether or not the weapon of the police officer was found at the scene and or if it was taken by the three suspects. So that's still circling around. The cops would not confirm or deny whether or not that was going on.
but someone on the inside 